Hi, this is Trevor with leatherwallets.org. In this series of videos, we are looking at money clip cardholder wallets. And in this particular video, we are doing a review of the Alpine Swiss leather money clip wallet. This is how it comes. It's priced uh, at Amazon at the time that I purchased this. I bought it for $9.99. Um, and this is how you'll get it. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the packaging, the number of pockets, how many cards you can fit into it reliably, um, how much money it can hold reliably. We're gonna measure the size, the weight. Uh, we're gonna test the leathers. How does it feel, smell? Um, how does it handle scratches? Um, we are going to look at the construction, so, uh, yeah, we're gonna take it apart, see what's on the inside. This one does have RFID protection, so we will go ahead and test that out. Uh, all right, well, let's go ahead and get started. So I already op opened this um, and took a look at the wallet. Uh, this is, they call it a gift box. Um, it's, it's like cardstock that's folded into an envelope uh, or a, yeah. So I don't, you know, this is all judgment. So you know, think what you want. This to me uh, isn't a gift box. Uh, just compare this to another wallet that we'll be reviewing uh, in this series. This is the leather wallet, Leatherology. And uh, yeah, that one is absolutely a gift box and no need to even wrap that guy. Um, this is of course a lot more expensive. Uh, but that's a gift box. Uh, this cardstock envelope, uh, I don't know. I have a hard time calling that a gift box. All right, so there's that. Um, you get this card in it. Uh, it's a, I don't know. You guys can uh, take a look at that. Uh, this isn't something I usually pay attention to, um, but yeah. All right, uh, with the wallet, we've got uh, this business card that states the MSRP, uh, I don't know if you can see that there, MSRP of $65. Uh, this wallet is not worth $65. I don't know uh, where they came up with that number or uh, why they would put that on there because it's a straight up, <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. All right, this card talks about the RFID um, protection that's in the wallet and a little bit of info on that. So, great. All right, here's the wallet. Um, you see we have an ID window up front with a thumb hole. Um, we've got uh, one pocket in the middle here and then two others on this side with a magnetic money clip. Uh, feels like there's just one magnet on there. Feels all right. Uh, the leather is a little bit shiny. Um, the price tells me that this leather is a, uh, is not a high quality. Um, the dye looks pretty good. Based on the edge, um, you've got all the leather is turned here and stitched, uh, and that's good. Let's go ahead and test the, uh, the capacity on this guy. Let's get some measurements here real quick. So I'm gonna do this all in millimeters, but I'll put a conversion up for everyone. Millimeters is easier and you'll see why. All right, so this way I get um, 101 um, point, 101.2 uh, if you can read that. Uh, this way I get Seventy-one point four, and then width. 
I get uh, 14, uh, let's see. Fifteen point one millimeters. All right. As far as the pockets go, for that guy, we got. Um, I should turn this this way. This is for the ID wallet about 60 millimeters wide center pocket fifty nine millimeters this pocket here is sixty point five And this last wallet, or last pocket, if I can get it in there. Okay, it feels like it's 60.7. Um, so just about 60 millimeters for each of those pockets. Um, let's go ahead and test that, the capacity and see how the, the cards feel. So I've got a bunch of test um, cards here we can put in um, that feels fine it's a little tight right now uh, and because this is a new leather wallet that's that's perfectly acceptable um, you do want it to be a little bit tight the leather will give and stretch uh, with age and use um, so a little tight now means it'll be a good fit later on and I just noticed this um, once this card was in there, but you see, um, get a pointing device here. Do you see right here how that that leather is notched in? It's not straight. Um, that's crappy. That sucks right there. Got an eyelash. All right. So uh, back to what I was saying. It's a little snug, uh, and that's fine at first. Snug isn't bad. Um, this this uh, next pocket has me a little concerned. So if this pocket is the full depth. Um, this card will be hard to get out. Uh, if they've shortened up the depth um, and made it, well, even, that's not much grip, but that would be something. So if they cut off that pocket somewhere around here so it doesn't go all the way in, uh, that won't be too bad, but let's go ahead and test that out. Okay, again, it's a little snug. Um, and it does go all the way in. Uh, so that's going to be really bad getting out. And, uh, you know, let's test the other pockets before even trying to get that out. Um, so same with this pocket. This is the only problem with uh, wallets that have vertical, or not the only problem, but this is an issue with wallets that have these vertical pockets is that, uh, you know, cards can get lost in there. So let's check this. This one's uh, feels all right. And again, nothing stops you from getting that card in all in there except for you consciously uh, making the decision not to. And then let's put one in this. Okay, so this is getting real tight now. Um, way too tight. You just... Uh, Okay, so we've got three cards in there. You're gonna, that's, that's too tight. Okay, so let's pull all of these out and let's not push them all the way in this time. So like there, go maybe the 
the same depth with that guy and a little bit deeper with this guy all right so I don't I don't like that um, that's pretty tight but you can get it out and I see I just pushed that one in more uh, yeah this is this is not good um, if they had another notch up here on this side, I could grab this card by both, both front and back, and that would be, you know, easy to get out. If this card goes down past this line, uh, and you have other cards in, you pretty much have to take everything out to be able to pull it out. That's just, that's not good. Uh, you're not going to have... You're not going to like this wallet until it breaks in and these stretch out a little bit. Um, we put four cards in there. Uh, based on the tightness, you may be able to put one more. So, and four cards, that's three credit cards in the slot pockets and one ID. Um, you could probably, you could probably fit one more card at the max two and that's that's really pushing it uh in the beginning probably for the first week or two um so we're gonna this one this oh crap so that just pushed that other card in there that's pretty tight. That's very tight. That's it. I'm calling it at uh, one ID, one ID, and one, two, three, four. If they would notch this pocket out uh, the same where it is here, this this pocket would be useful as it is it's like a storage right now um, something that you're gonna put in there and forget about uh, and that's it okay four cards and an ID let's test cash now um, all right so I got a bunch of bills here uh, let's try with ten to start out so one two three Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're going to fold it once and set it in there. Make sure it's good and secure. And. Hey, Bubba. It's my dog, Mans. Lay down, Bubba. Uh, the magnet's not very good. Uh, for well, I mean it, it. It would be fine for fewer bills. Uh, ten. I'm not gonna trust ten uh, bills in there. Just because any uh, little bump on the this area and uh, the magnet's going to release. Let's drop it down to. Seven. Let's try seven. That feels good right there. Okay. Looks like seven. Uh, is good. Let's bump it up. Let's try eight. Not bad.
A looks all right. Let's try nine. What the heck? So nine is getting to be a little bit loose here. All right, I'm gonna say eight bills. Eight bills is the max that this guy can hold. Uh, all right, so what's next? We talked about the packaging, uh, the pockets, capacity of cards, money. Uh, size, let's check its weight here. See that? It's a zero. So 50 grams is what we're looking at for that guy, um, which is, you know, fine. Uh, nothing wrong with a 50 gram wallet. Um, let's go ahead and scratch this guy up. Uh, so what we're looking for is what will the leather look like after it's been scratched? Um, I will just pick up, oh, I got some sandpaper here. It's a uh, 150 grit. Um, we're just gonna look. So let's, uh, let's rough up underneath this money clip here area. So I don't know if you can see that, but um, it's it's lightening up a little bit. Which is fine, uh, it's, you know. It looks all right. I don't see any major issues here. To be concerned about. Yeah, looks fine. So scratches, it will lighten up, but that's not. It's not too bad. Um, if it was like total white, we'd have an issue. Um, looking at the leather, and let me just get you a close up of. Uh, what that scratching did. All right. Um, it feels, I mean, it's, it's fairly soft. Uh, so I've got a couple of pieces of really high quality leather here um, to compare it against. Um, some full grain here. Um, and some embossed, uh, this, this one's embossed. So the leather is a little bit, uh, you can tell that this one's embossed also. Um, you can feel, feel that on there. It feels just a tiny bit plastic-like um, and not uh, as, as leather-like as those pieces. Um, it's, it's not too bad though, nothing, nothing uh, too major. Oh, wow. <laughs> it uh, has a definite chemical smell. Um, so there's, there's a type of leather that is uh, basically scraps uh, pieces. And what they do is instead of throwing away the scrap pieces, they get those, grind them all up, um, mix it with this glue, uh, and then run it out on a sheet and let it dry. Uh, that's considered leather um, because it's made of leather pieces. Um, and that's what I bet this is made out of. The they state it's genuine leather. Um, genuine leather is 
a marketing term. Um, here in the U.S., genuine leather typically means something that uh, is this uh, type leather, this um, this uh, finished leather here. Um, that's what I bet it is. It doesn't smell good at all. Um, yeah. Let's go ahead and let me pause this for just a second. Uh, we're going to see if we can uh, get this leather to melt, and that will give us a little bit more information about what it's made of. Hold on. All right, so I'm back. I've got a, a lighter here. Um, let's just see what happens. And if you can see that, um, the smell is terrible. Um, but yeah, it started to melt there. Um, so yeah, so that's no good. Um, leather uh, on this guy, I am rating very low. Um, We'll do a couple more tests when we open it up, um, but so far it's not looking very good. And man, did I make this room smell bad. Uh, all right, let's test, this has RFID. Uh, so let's jump on that. Here I have a uh, RFID credit card. And here is a little uh you know thing you see at the the store um and you can see it does work all right so let's go ahead and throw it in the id window for the first shot um nothing that's good Throw it in this window, or that pocket, and nothing. All right, so it does look like, and remember this is, um, so it's a credit card, it's a smart credit card um, with the tap and pay um, RFID. This works on the NFC frequency, which is 13.56 megahertz. Um, some of you out there will have uh, building access cards that are called proximity cards um, and they work off a different frequency. I don't have the ability to really test that uh, at the moment. Um, that frequency is 126 kilohertz um, and so uh, we can tell for sure it's it's passing on 13.56 megahertz, um, which is easier to block, frankly, than uh, the lower frequency. Um, this doesn't specify NFC or uh, the frequency, but I can almost guarantee you that it's not going to block um, access cards. So keep that in mind when you see RFID, there's two frequencies. If you're looking for smart cards, uh, it will block it. Anything like an, a proximity card, which is an access, is normally used in access uh, cards, won't block that. All right, uh, so that's it for the tests um, that I had in mind. Let's cut this bad boy open. Uh, first, let's take a look at the uh, magnet here. Um, I am just interested in how, well, first I'm interested in how this uh, does look like it is stitched as well as glued.
Uh, so it looks like it's cotton thread, uh, which uh, isn't the best thread to use. It's what's used in most wallets until you get, uh, you know, into the more premium brands. But uh, cotton thread there. Uh, let's check this end. Let's cut out the battery there. I think I said battery. <laughs> I react. Obviously, it's not batting. I would like to know what do you think the chances of me um, so let's see do I have any so it looks like they're both magnetic both sides are magnetic um, all right we'll set that up aside and we'll, we'll compare those in the wrap up um, let's take this out and let's look at this leather and this backing So the parts that are gonna wear on this wallet um, is where this is attached to the wallet. Uh, and they did a fairly good job. I would have liked to see uh, double stitching um, down here uh, where it attached. Uh, right here on this end. And uh, as you can see, there's just the single stitching there. Double stitching would be would have been better. Um, we've got a backing material here. I don't know what this is. The leather is way thin and stretchy. All right, um, now on to the main part of the wallet. For this part of the wallet, the areas that get, um, that fail faster than the rest of the wallet is gonna be this uh, area here. Um, so imagine you have a bunch of cards in, in the wallet. They're putting pressure on this seam here um, with enough time uh, and uh, with thin enough leather these stitching holes become like a, a perforated you know paper area so it just psh, rips right along that line um, having thicker leather having um, uh, Holes that are a little bit further apart um, prevent that somewhat from happening. Um, this leather is very thin, uh, so that's out. Let's go ahead and we'll cut it down the middle and then we'll look at each side. leather folded over and then this these are both stitched 
Now this top side is stitched and these two are folded over and glued. So you've got your uh, RFID material there. Let's cut these stitches here. Okay. Um, you've got this thick backing material, uh, which is I don't know what that is. It's some kind of rubber, it's, uh, like a mat. I don't know what this is. Kind of has like a thick duct tape feel to it with a cloth, cloth um, liner. Okay. Um, let's go to stitching. Very glued down. This whole piece is glued, um, and that's that's pretty good. You're still going to, uh, so this plastic is going to, in time, uh, wear out. It'll get hard and brittle, um, and then just break. It is pretty well attached. All right. So there's that side. Let's take a look at uh, this side. That's what uh, happens when you tear that leather. Or when the leather is very thin like that, um, it's easy to tear. All right, um, so the RFID material here, it's, um, it's doubled up on this side because we've got uh, this this like duct tape stuff. And then a couple pieces of the RFID material there. Um, and feels like we've got uh, at least one more here. This is the liner to the pocket. And you can see the, um, it's the, the part that goes, uh, you know, the cards go down right in here. Um, just a flap of leather there, the RFID liner on the inside. Um, very thin. And then the other pocket with another piece. So they did good in lining it with RFID. Give them credit there. Uh, I don't know. They they have all this this backing in here. Um, next to the leather. All right. All right, so here it is. This is what makes the, uh, as you can see, made in India. So uh, not China. Um, this is what makes the Alpine Swiss um, leather card holder wallet. Um, we've got a, a bunch of this kind of duct tape. I, I don't know what this material is, um, but it's like a rubber. Uh, it feels like duct tape. To me I don't know what it is um, pockets it seems like almost at least each pocket was lined with the uh, the RFID material which is what these are um, you've got uh, thin leather all the way around especially along the seams um, so uh, you've got these are the pocket linings um, it's a 
you know, black material. I don't, I don't know what this is either. Um, but just a woven material there. Uh, and that's it. Okay, so that's what makes the wallet. Okay, so we've tore down the Alpine Swiss leather card holder wallet and let me tell you my thoughts. So, uh, this wallet holds four cards and an ID. Um, and that's if you're willing to put up with those deep pockets or maybe have really tiny fingers and, and don't feel like that'll be an issue. Um, it holds seven bills uh, with the, the magnets here. Um, not a ton. Uh, that's not great. The leather is, smells very, has a high chemical smell to it. Um, it feels pretty nice, and uh, so this grain is a stamped grain, um, and that's okay. And it it uh, doesn't rip terribly easy, although that piece did. Um, so, so yeah. So if you can put up with the absolutely frustrating. Uh, way to get out the cards for at least you know the first month uh, or two months until the leather stretches and forms enough around your cards that they come out easily um, you don't mind paying 10 bucks for a wallet that'll last uh, you know three months uh, on the low end I, I'm I'm fairly certain this will last three months if you're not packing it full of cards um, and maybe, uh, maybe up to a year, you know? If you don't mind paying $10 for a wallet uh, with a little bit of gamble on how long it'll last, you want a wallet that has a RFID protection and uh, does it fairly well, um, or at least has every pocket lined. This may be a good choice for you. Uh, I wouldn't buy it as a gift for someone if you're looking for something with a fancy gift box. Uh, this cardstock uh, box, in my opinion, doesn't cut it um, for really a truly gift box. This is just packaging. And that's it. So I hope you found that useful. Uh, check in with the next video. We are going to be stepping up from the Alpine Swiss to a Muttback uh, card holder wallet right here. It's called the Bunker. Check for that in the next video. Uh, jump on the website, leatherwallets.org. You can see all the reviews, um, all the wallets that we're taking a look at. Let me know if you have any questions, if there's anything that I didn't do that you wanna see or anything that uh, I did that you thought was useless and you don't want to see in any further videos. Uh, this is new for me, so, so I'm trying to get better and learn and any advice or uh, tips that you can share or things you like, didn't like, uh, I'd appreciate that. All right, guys. Thanks so much and goodbye.